Every bee has a job inside of a colony. They work together for the same goal, and that's hive maintenance and hive survival. Bees are so incredibly responsible for a large part of our food consumption. People have seemed to notice that there's not as many honeybees as it used to be. Uh, my name is Richard Scott. I'm chief meteorologist for WBUA in Tuscaloosa, and I'm a hoppy beekeeper. It, it all started from we just need pollinators in my area, and I know for pollination you need honeybees. People will actually want beehives in their gardens, want beehives on their property because they know for the pollination it's a big benefit. What we do here is grow these bees to where they get large enough to be able to self-sustain, and then I move them to one of our bee yards. Bees do not waste space. They try to build anywhere they can. So I'm just going through here and looking for frames that I think is ready to take, ready to harvest. This one's about 80 percent, more than 80 percent on that side, so we can take it. And I'm looking from the bottom and I can tell it is indeed all of them are capped off and they're ready to harvest. Let's take this one to the truck. Oh, they're really calm today. You guys got lucky. They are very calm. Honeybees can do a pretty cool thing. They make wax and they literally make wax out of their rear end and they can build comb out of that. Uh, bees take nectar out of flowers and they take pollen. They ingest it. They regurgitate it. It's not bee throw up, by the way. People think it's bee throw up. It's a different process. People have been using honey for as many years as we've been around. It, it, there's been evidence of uh, honey that was found over 3,000 years ago. I think it's the taste and the fact that it, it can be a substitute for sugar. It's natural, it's good for you. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pull the frames out and I'm gonna sit here and I'm gonna cut the comb off of there, the, the wax capping, and that's to expose the honey. These bees work awfully hard to make this and we don't want to waste any of it. So this is a honey extractor and through centrifugal force, it will sling the honey to the outside of this barrel. It will drain down and I've got a tap on this side with a catch bucket and a filter on it. Well, people seem to be kind of interested in the process because not a whole lot of people know what all goes behind beekeeping. So I started posting on YouTube. All right, YouTube, Richard Scott here. We are well into our spring bee management season. That's all cat baby bees just inside there. People found out that I do this and they found out that I go remove honeybee colonies and people that have problems with bees at their house, they don't want to kill the bees, which is awesome. I mean, hats off to people that don't want to kill bees. So they call people like me and other beekeepers to come out and remove the bees safely and give them a new home and help them thrive and grow and develop. We finished <laughs> it up. <laughs> Almost done. One of the largest hives I removed was at a high school in Demopolis. I want to say it was about seven feet tall, maybe three feet wide. This was an enormous honeybee colony and it was so cool. Uh, just to go in there and look at the nest and see how everything was, how everything was made, how everything was stored. You had honey, you had nectar, you had pollen. And it's like a big machine. They all work together, and it's just so cool of a process. Well, put the boards back up and call it a day. Uh, between doing hive removals, extracting honey, and just spring management, hive management, it, there's it's a year-long process. And throughout the year, I gather information. Who wants honey? how many bottles do they want, and uh, we organize it and just get it out there as fast as we can. The rig we have, it's a very simple setup. I've got a rack here to put my bottles on. Of course, this is the best part, this is the liquid gold. Last summer, we had 2,000 pounds of honey, and we do everything, the, the bottling process in our home. This is just something simple, and that's what I like to do. I want to keep it a small operation. We try to locate bees in places where there's a, a need for them. If there's farmers nearby that need the pollination process. So we try to put bees in logical areas where number one, they'd make plenty of honey, and number two, they would make good tasting honey. It's a, just an interesting hobby. It's almost like therapeutic. It's something that gets me out of the house that I enjoy doing, and it's beneficial. <laughs>